goal in this app is to first create a Google Fusion table on the web, insert into it some information about our current location, use that information to create a map, and then to access this Fusion table directly from our app to show our location on a Google map. The amount of code that we need to write to launch an HTTPS request from inside an Android app using an intent object is surprisingly small. Here, for example, is all the code that we need to display the map object that we looked at earlier. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a Google Fusion table. If you don't have Fusion tables installed in Google right now, you can look for information on Google about how to install it and then press the Create button to create your first Fusion table. Once you have the Fusion Tables module installed, you can go to any folder on your drive and create a new Fusion Table by hitting the right mouse and clicking More and then going to Google Fusion Tables. When you first create the table, it wants to know if you want to start with an empty table or take a spreadsheet and convert it over. We're going to start with an empty table and we're going to give our table a name save and you can see that it's already created a table for us what we're going to do is we're going to change the names of some of these column headings Now here we're going to create a, a special type of paired column called a location with latitude and longitude. You can see these two little yellow marks which are suggesting that these two uh, columns are linked somehow. We now have our basic structure set and now we're going to put in a little information about where we are and who we are. I'm going to just put in here for the name John Smith and now I need to calculate my latitude and longitude. If you don't know where that is you can just open up a new tab on the browser and you can uh, use one of these free services to figure out where uh, you, you are in the world. I'm going to use this NASA data finder. Once I enter my home location, you see that it prints the latitude and longitude for me. I'm going to just scoop up those numbers and use them in my table. Now you see that I have the basics of the table all set up. And now if I click on this Map of Location tab, and now when I click on the location, you can see that my current location is displayed with this red dot. To allow the app to access the Fusion table, we're going to need an API key. We're going to get that from the Google Developers Console. So let's search for Developers Console and that'll bring us to this first link and when we get there we're gonna see our most recent project that we worked on up here you may not have a project if you haven't worked with this uh, these API's before regardless we're gonna create a brand new project now and I'm gonna call this project um, fusion table project like that and I'm gonna hit the create button and in a few seconds it's going to create a new project for me. Okay, it's back now and it's created this Fusion Table project and the first thing we need to do is we need to turn on the Fusion Table capability for this project. So under other popular APIs I'm going to click on this Fusion Table API and I'm going to enable that API and now that that's done uh, it's complaining that I need to create some credentials to be able to access the fusion table and I'm gonna pick this API key and I'm gonna say browser key and I'm going to say create 
and here we have our API key that we wanted. So I'm going to just click on this to copy to the clipboard. And now we're going to use this key inside our app. Let's first explore the Google API interface directly from the browser. Here I've typed in the string that accesses the Fusion table and I've added in here the ID of the Fusion table and then a question mark followed by the key that we previously got from the Google Developers Console. And what's returned here you can see is detailed information about the construction of our table. If I now take that same string and put it inside my intent object, you see that the output displayed on the phone screen is identical to what I got before on my PC. Alternatively, here is an example of how we can do an SQL type of query by adding the SQL query string here, followed by the table ID and then our key as before. You can see now that instead of offering us the structure of the data, we get the actual data itself that's present in our table. If, however, instead of using the Google API interface, we wish to display a web page directly using the HTTPS, we can accomplish this with our intent object as well. For example, here is the map I have showing my current location and I can simply take this entire HTTP string just as it is and place that inside my intent object. Once again, you can see that what showed up on the screen before on my PC is identical to what will appear on the phone. Music